Good morning, and good morning to the life-changing faith, family, church, as I'm here in the gathering place. And as we start preparing, start talking and communicating in the coming weeks about where we go from here, what is our mission, our purpose, that we cannot come back the same way that we left months ago, but we must be focused and determined to follow the precepts of God in our teaching, in our preaching, and in our service. I wanna thank all of you who have given during these past two months of not even being in the gathering place. My heart is just full that we were able to maintain and to go forth in our bills and the things that you provide for. Please continue to pray for each other. Pray for the gathering place. Pray for the ministers, the elder, as we go forth in the coming weeks of coming back to the gathering place at an appointed time. I thank you and I bless you for all that you have done even those that are not a part of this ministry here in this locality, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you also for your prayers across the United States of America and those that chime in and those that watch the Wednesday night Bible study. I want to thank you that we say something that will cause a life-changing moment in your life. And that is the word of the living God. Thank you and bless you. This morning, we're talking from the subject, what really matters? What really matters? And one thing that God has put on my heart is to talk about what really matters. And the more I start meditating on it and the more that the Holy Spirit start dealing with me, I, I think during this pandemic and even during this unrest, on the death of George Floyd, that many have moved away from trusting God through every situation. And the believer must stay the course. They must stay focused. The one thing that I'm finding is that I'm hearing in the public arena, in the marketplace, that no one wants God. They're saying, where's God? They're saying, why pray when blacks, African-Americans are still being killed by what they say police officers mistreated in our judicial system, which on some effect is true. But there is a deeper problem that we must address there is a deeper situation that we have to look at and not be blindsided by Republicans, Democrats, or liberals. Our main focus is the word of the living God. And so this morning, I'm sticking with the word. When it feels good, when it don't feel good, I'm sticking with God. I'm maintaining my course through the word. And so let me remind you of what God has called you to do. We are not weaklings. We are not defeated. We're not downtrodden because the Bible says that God uphold us with his right hand. When I look at the protesters, from city to city to city. And I look at the damage that has come out of some of the protests. And I look at all of those that are marching, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Indians. The one thing that's missing, the one thing that is, is invisible is the people of God standing up for the word of God. I've seen on one news uh, station, one guy in the midst of protesters preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he was told repeatedly 
to get out of here. We don't need that anymore. We don't want that anymore. That is how the enemy is setting up society, a society without laws, a society without God. So it's time for the believer to continue to pray. And those of you that are asleep, it's time for you to wake up and start a hearing to the word of God. We can make a difference. We can make a change. Because God has given us the ability and the power. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, and the Bible says the disciples scattered, and they thought all hope was lost. They gave up, and Peter and the apostles went back to their occupations. They went back to their jobs and their families, thinking that the cause of Christ was over because he died. But the Bible says on the third day, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead and he called the disciples. And the Bible says he appeared with them about 40 days, ministering and teaching. And he told them to go to Jerusalem. See, the cause is not over. People come out of the woodwork. And what they're doing is, if you look at it, they're protesting. And we should. We should say something about the death of George Floyd and many others that have been killed unjustly. But let me ask you a question. What really matters is that there is a hypocrisy even within our own community. And it's time for the believer to raise up. Let me ask you, last year, how many deaths Black on black crime in Baltimore. How many deaths? Black on black crime in Chicago. Let me ask you this. How many deaths in Los Angeles? Mothers have lost their sons and their daughters. Just yesterday, a couple of days ago, a 16-year-old girl was killed in Baltimore. Nobody's standing up for those mothers and fathers that are losing their children in our communities. If we're going to march, let's march against violence. Let's march with prayer. Let's march with God being our forefront of who we are. The cause is not over. It's just beginning. And it's time for the believer to raise up and not take a knee for George Floyd, George Floyd but take a knee in prayer and asking our God to cause healing in our land. And so Jesus came back. He rose up and called the disciples in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And he told them to go to Jerusalem until this right here in verse 8. He said, when you go to Jerusalem, but you shall receive power. You shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then Jesus said, when this power comes upon you, you shall be witnesses. That means lights. That means in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of unrest, in the midst of injustice, we have to stand up and we have to use the power that has been given us. What's that power? The power of prayer. The power in the name of Jesus Christ to pray for elective leaders who using this whole pandemic and this unrest for political gain. Where's the church? Where's the believers? We are the ones that to make the difference. Let me tell you something. When the march is over and when time has passed, people will go back to their communities. They will go back to their neighborhoods. They will go back to their pot smoking. They would go back to their alcoholism. They would go back to their adultery. They would go back to their fornication. They would go back to their hatred. They would go back to their greed. When all of this is over and said and done, without the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
people will remain the same and crisis will remain the same. But for the believer, it's time for us to wake up and to do what the Bible has said. He told them, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Today, we are called to be witnesses in our cities, in our communities, in our neighborhoods. You cannot be a witness just hiding in your homes, hiding and staying out of sight. There's a time that we must come together. And when we come together, our sign will say, holiness unto the Lord. For God is still sovereign over all things. But God requires the believer not to live by political correctness, but to live by the word of God. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, when Jesus was being tempted, Jesus said these words. And he answered the devil when the tempter came and he said to Jesus, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. That means whatever your need is, whatever it is, he said, he said, he said, command it. But Jesus answered and it's still good today is as good today as it was 2,000 years ago. He said, it is written. It is what? Written. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So I don't care what's going on in society. God said, man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here's the tragedy. George Floyd died a tragic death. Nine minutes, this guy had his knee on his neck. That was tragic. My heart sunk when I watched it. I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was seeing with my own eyes. But there's someone more tragic than that. And this might upset you. It might make you even angry at me. But the tragedy of George Floyd's death is tragic that he died the way he did. But the tragedy is if he wasn't born again and if he didn't know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, he didn't go to heaven. That's the tragedy of life is to die without Jesus in your life is to die without receiving him as your Lord and say, that's the tragedy because death is not the end. The protest is only man's efforts. It's man's efforts to try to correct a wrong. Nothing wrong with protests. But if you went down to Constitution Avenue or Lafayette Square Park yesterday, and the mayor put in a row, Black Lives Matters. That is man's effort to try to correct an injustice. If you go, went down there, there's no God visible. There's no God anywhere. Even believers have melted in to the melting pot. I'm realizing that even our elected leaders say very little. But the Bible has a whole lot to say because each of us will be judged and will stand before God. No matter how a person dies, he or she must stand before God to give an account for the life God has given you. And not many want God today. Not many want the Bible. They think they're weak, that they can't succeed in being a Christian. When you talk about the precepts of God in this day and time, you're going to be attacked. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be ridiculed. Anytime you lift up the name of Jesus Christ and talk about God, even the people who say Black Lives Matter will attack you because their agenda is not the agenda of God. And I know that makes some mad. I know that makes some angry. Go back over to 2 Chronicles 7.14. God told the people back then, 
if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, turn from your wicked ways and seek my face, he said, then I will heal the land. People want peace and justice. You can't have peace without the king of peace, and his name is Jesus Christ. Many Christians are afraid to even mention the name. They're afraid to be opposite of society, opposite of their political correctness, and stand on the word of God. Many have abandoned, pastors have abandoned the word of God. Leaders have abandoned the word of God because they want to be politically correct. But let me tell you something. There is no politically correctness when you stand before the judgment seat of God. Because we are commanded by the Bible to walk in love. We are commanded by the Bible to pray ye one for another that you all may be healed. We are to pray for the family of, of a George Floyd. One thing about the family that I've come to realize is in his death, his family going to become real rich. They're going to get paid. That's what the, uh, uh, the counties and the state do. When a police officer is wrong, they give them money. Act that, that's not going to fix it. Money is not going to fix this problem. The only thing that fixed this problem is faith in Jesus Christ, and that today is not popular. It's not popular. But he said, you shall be witnesses. So I'm called to be a witness. Number two, I'm called to live by the word of God, even when it's not popular. People don't realize how much power you have as a believer. But too many Christians today want power to cast out devils. They want power to heal the sick. They want to make a name for themselves. They want them, their names in the lights. They want to be known. They want to have influence. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to keep saying it until you get tired of me saying it, the greatest power that a believer can walk in is the power to live obedient and the power to, to operate a life that's, that's honorable to God, a power over sin. Power not to sin. That, baby, is power. And it glorifies the Father when we live our lives according to the word of God. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about overcoming sin. Even when it was building a tabernacle, the, the, the signature over top of the door of the tabernacle said, holiness to the Lord. It is still required today. This is not the first time people march. This is not the first time people ride it. It's not the first time people gave up on God. Even, even James said, or Timothy said, he said, perilous times shall come and men shall be lovers of their own selves more than lovers of God. The tragedy of life is to die without Jesus Christ. That's the real tragedy. If I die at the hand of an officer, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Even if I die unjustly, God still has the last say so. And you and I, no matter how you die, you will stand before God to be judged. Either as a sinner without Jesus Christ or a person born again and covered by the blood of Jesus. That is really what matters. That is the bottom line. Marching, you can march. But they're marching without God. God is nowhere in the picture. Preachers are, 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 are grandstanding and not talking about Jesus Christ. They're talking about the issue, the issue, the problem. How can you expect a person who's not filled with the spirit of God is not born again to operate civilly? How, how can you expect that? How can you expect a person who don't know God, under the they're under the power of Satan, they're being controlled by Satan, whether they're white, whether they're black, whether they're Hispanic, or whether they're Asian. They cannot operate but in their natural nature. So if you're a white person and you are, you are racist or you are bigoted, it's because you don't know Christ. If you are a black person and you are hateful of white people, you are hateful of, of anybody, guess what? You are under control of Satan. So anybody without Christ, anybody that not born again. No matter how good you are, you are a child of Satan. 
And only God can deliver you out of his hand. He said, if you confess with your heart, mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, thou shalt be saved. God comes in, he renews our thinking, he renews our philosophy, and we begin to live by the precepts of the Word of God and put it into practice every day. What really matters? Where you gonna spend eternity. What really matters? How you're living. Do you understand what I'm saying? When this is over, They'll go back to their drinking, their pot smoking. They'll go back to aborting babies like they have never stopped. They'll go back to their hatred and their communities. In the black communities, you, we burned, they burned down their stores. They looted them. Whites are going to go back to their communities, and their stores are still going to be intact. The shopping malls will still be intact, but your stores are destroyed. But you don't want God. You don't want us to preach the gospel. You tell us to get off the corner. You tell us to go into our churches and to hide. Well, we're not hiding no more. We're not hiding anymore. We're not going to apologize for living holy. We're not going to apologize for overcoming sin in our lives. We're not going to apologize anymore. I'd rather die living in righteousness and to the glory of God than to die disobeying God. The word of God. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of his mouth, God's mouth. So the first thing is we are called to be witnesses. You can't hide no longer. You can't sit in your house and just read your Bible. You got to now let your light shine. God told me the other day, he said, many Christians are like a candle hidden under a bush. You're gone in the house. You very rarely share your faith. You're afraid of rejection. Well, that's the part of ministry. It's to be rejected. But now you need to be examples in your family. Speak up for truth. Talk about Jesus Christ. Talk about what really matters. Black lives matter. Every life matter. But what matters more than anything is are you born again? Are you a genuine follower of Jesus Christ? Or you are just one who just talk to talk but don't walk to walk? You Ask yourself that question this morning. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. You can see I'm kind of fired up because I want you to know the truth. What really matters is obeying God. What really matters is praying one for another that we all may be healed. What really matters is being a witness and a true example of a man and woman of God. You can't hide any longer. You got to come out. You got to begin to stand on the truth. And share the truth. Don't be afraid. If they knock you down, get up. If they talk about you, smile. Because who got you? God got you. When Jesus was being crucified, he said, I could call 10,000 angels. Just call them and they'll destroy the whole world. But he didn't do it because he loved you and I. Even though he was ridiculed. And talked about. It wasn't popular because the Jews didn't like them. The Greeks didn't like them. The uh, Sadducees didn't like them. Nobody liked them because he brought truth. I'm bringing this morning truth. I'm bringing this morning what really matters. Your soul is what really matters. Where are you going to spend eternity? Yes, it's tragic that George Floyd was killed the way he killed, was killed the way he was killed. I don't know if he was saved or not. That's not my call. That's God's call. Only God knows that. When he entered heaven, God knew. But we as believers need to take our place and begin to stand for truth and holiness and righteousness and do not party with the unbelievers. Stop partying with the unbelievers. They don't want God. It's self-effort trying to fix a social issue with people who do not know God and do not honor God. They can only operate from a position of flesh and greed and hatred until a man or woman is born again. They can only operate from the flesh. They cannot operate from the spirit. God, do not hear your prayers. Even if you go to church, and you only got a member, but you're not born again. Your prayers 
are not being heard. You are a follower of Satan. The Bible says there are two children in the earth, the children of God and the children of Satan. If Forrest can find that scripture for me and put it on the screen and let you read it for yourself, there's only two children, children of God and the children of Satan. Children of God have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have committed to dying to self and have committed to living holiness unto the Lord. Sinners, those who reject Jesus Christ are called sinners. And because they reject Jesus, they become the children of Satan and they do his bidding. Whatever he tells them to do, they do it. Not so for the believer. It's time to wake up. It's time to continue to pray. But now it's time to not hide, but to come out of the church, come out of the four walls and join me as we pray for our communities and our neighborhoods and our healing, that the killing among blacks will stop. We're killing each other. Young girls are aborting babies because they don't want them. They treat them like they're a piece of trash when they're made in God's image. You had sex. You produced a child. And because you don't want it, you kill it. And society is good with it. And God isn't. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 16, the place of power. The place of power. Look at this. For the word of God is quick, alive. It is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Listen, just because you don't see it's manifesting right away, the word of God is not weak, it's powerful. We may look weak. We may look defeated. But baby, we are not defeated. We are not weak because we depend on the power of God. We depend on God, not our own efforts. Only when it tells us to do something by the Holy Spirit should we do it. For the word of God is powerful, sharpening any two-edged swords, even piercing, even to the dividing and sunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The word of God, it searches, it knows what's true. It knows the intent of the heart of why you do what you do. It knows when you're fearful. It knows when you're walking in truth. It knows when you're not walking in truth. And many Christians today have abandoned the word of God because when you start talking like this, when you start talking that everybody's opinion matters, but the thing that matters the most is God's word over my opinion, over my thoughts, over of what I perceive and is injustice. But God said, if, if we would pray and turn from our wicked ways, that's the problem. Protesters aren't turning from their wicked ways. There's no God down there. Yesterday, down at the plaza along Constitution, Pennsylvania Avenue, they had their music going and they meshed it in with Gay Pride Day. Hey, Gay Pride Week is coming up. You know what that means, right? Protesters and gay pride people, everything that we're supposed to be against because God is against it. God is against same-sex marriage. God is against fornication. God is against adultery. God is against hate. God is against injustice. God is against it. And you say, why don't he do something? That's why he got you here. That's why he got you here. You and I are the representative in the earth. We can make the difference. White people need to, need to understand you can't go to heaven being racist. Black people need to understand you can't go to heaven hating. Asian. Hispanic, you need a heart change. You need a nature change. And the only one can do that is God Almighty. So he said in 13 verse, neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. Talking about God. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. God sees everything. God is allowing it. We all being tested. We all being tried. Where is your faith at? Is your faith in Black Lives Matter? Is your faith in the government? 
Is your faith in a stimulus check? You want another stimulus check that only lasts for two days and you spent it up? You didn't pay your rent? You didn't use it correctly? The devil is making rupture of his people. He could care less about you. The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But God comes that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly, and people don't want that. They want to the pleasure their flesh. 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold, lay hold on our professions. What's your profession? He said, for we have not a high priest, listen, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our, he understands what's happening. He understands the feeling of our infirmities. But he was in all points also tempted like we are, yet without sin. We're tempted. Yes, we are. We will always be tempted as long as we's in, his bo in these bodies. But you can overcome temptation. For God has given you the power, according to Acts 1 and 8. He has given you the word of God. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word proceeded out the mouth of God. And the place of power is God's word. 16, let us therefore, listen, come boldly right now to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace, listen, that we may receive mercy and find grace in the time of need. I believe this is the time of need. I believe right now this is the time of need. People are marching because they're not working. They're working from home. They're telemarketing, but God is not in the midst. If you die without Jesus Christ, no matter how you die, in a plane crash, on a train, in a car crash, or if a person is murdered, guess what? You still are going to face God Almighty. You're still going to face him. And you still will have to give an account for how you're living your life. You should not be practicing sin. You should not be practicing hatred. We should rely on God and allow him to direct our path and not self-effort absent from God's power and his word. You talk to me, I'm going to give you the word. I'm going to tell you what the word says. I know you dislike it. I know you don't like it. I know it, it makes you feel uneasy. But if you're in a relationship and you're not married, it's against the word of God. If you're being hateful, if you threw a brick, if you cursed, if you got in, in, into law enforcement faces, and, and said unimaginable things. That's terrible. That's not how we are as Christians. And you go down there and talk to people, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. But look at that. Look at that character, the attitude. The best thing you do for George Floyd is to pray for his family and pray for those that are still living because there's nothing you can do about those that are passed on. Nothing. The greatest thing we can do now is be a witness, live by the word of God, and reside in the place of power. And that place of power is Hebrew 4, 16 first. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians. I'm telling you, look at the, look at the killings in our community. We done killed more people. In Chicago, 900 and something black deaths. By who? Black people. African-Americans, Baltimore, 400-something deaths. Who killed them? Black people. Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. We need to correct in our own communities. How do we correct it? The church needs to stand up and tell them, unless you're born again, you cannot change. You cannot, you cannot change until you allow God into your heart and he fills you with the Holy Spirit and gives you power to overcome the flesh, hatred, racism, and bigotry. Ephesians chapter 6. What matters? Where are you going to spend eternity? Because your day is coming. I'm almost done. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Look what Paul says. Paul said, finally, my brother, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Here's his first. Listen, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not the government, not hoping they pass some laws and, and, and we do need police reform. 
Police officers need to check police officers when they're being abusive. I'm not against that. But what I am against is when you leave God out of the equation. He said, and in the power of his might, he says, put on the, 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 the believer is to put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of Satan. What's the wiles of Satan? Protest that, that excludes God. Where's the preachers? Where's the bishops? Where's the apostles? They got Black Lives Matter signs up. Now, isn't that a run? I ain't holding up no Black Lives Matter sign. They don't stand for righteousness. They don't stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't stand for goodness and holiness. They don't stand for none of that. Any of these groups do not want God. They want power, influence, and they want anarchy. The Bible says God set government up. Say God put men into places that the righteous may live peacefully. But when you put God out of the equation, it's impossible for man to live peacefully. He said for the Christian to put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against all the wiles of Satan. Listen to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places, wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be to withstand in the evil day and having done all, stand, stand on the word of God. Stand on the truth of the Bible. We need to fix our communities first. But these leaders are greedy and selfish. They do not pass laws. You are still in the projects. You are still on public assistance. After 50 years, our communities have gotten no better. Our homes are still dilapidated in a lot of our cities. Schooling are still, our kids are still being taught on a lower level. Every parent is trying to find a better school to send their kid to for an education. And the churches are empty because you don't want God. You want the government to do it. You want the government to fix it. But let me tell you something, the government can't fix it because the government in most cases, even though God put it there without God being infused in it, guess what? They only in for themselves. So, and having therefore your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate for righteousness, your feet, shod, uh, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, above all taking the shield of faith, which wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I don't see anything like a black, I don't see anything in there for a black matter sign. You need to hold up the word of God. And get a chance to talk to somebody, tell them, do you know Jesus Christ? But you're afraid to. You're scared. What matters is where you're going to spend eternity. You and I are going to die. I don't know how we're going to die. I pray I don't die getting murdered. I pray I don't die in a car accident. I pray I don't die on my motorcycle. I pray I just pass away. But no matter how you pass away, if you're not genuinely born again, you will be judged with sinners. Satan is not your problem. We our own problem because we won't live holiness unto the Lord. What really matters is the word of God. What really matters is obedience. What really matters is walking by faith according to the word of God. What really matters is to trust God in all situations, even when I don't see anything. I know God is working. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, 12, God cannot lie. It's impossible. By two immutable things, God cannot lie. God has the believer. Believers should not fear policemen. Believers should not fear. God will protect you. If he got to send angels, if God got to do anything, he'll protect the righteous. For they are in the hands of God. And if you're not the righteous, and if you're not born again, you can't expect the protection of God. Only thing that's keeping you alive each day is the grace of God to give you opportunity to get it right. Come to Jesus. Give him your life. Stop sinning. Stop fornicating. Stop smoking pot. Look at our communities on every corner. People make jokes about it. There's a church and a liquor store. I was riding through Montgomery County, and I was looking how, how clean the streets were. 
I was looking at no trash along the curb. I look at the grass being all cut. But then I come down here to Branch Avenue. We got a forest in the middle of Branch Avenue. We got grass at least five feet high. We got trees overgrown. Our neighborhoods are being ravaged with liquor stores. We got people living in the woods. We got people standing on the street corners begging for money so they can get more liquor to get drunk to try to escape their problems. And where's the Christian inside the building hiding when you're called to be a witness? Well, that's not what God called me to do. We are all called to be a witness. He said, nobody take a candlestick and put it under a bushel, but they put it out in the open for all to see. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? I'm calling for those warriors. Coming up on Saturday, I'll be preaching on the corner. I would love to have some people join me. I would love to have some believers that's come out there and pray. You ain't got to do nothing. You ain't got to talk to nobody. You ain't got to hand out no track. All I want you to do is come and pray and be a witness if God uses you. What really matters is are we living to the glory of God or are we living to the pleasure of men? And society has become more dependent on the government who don't want God. They put God out of schools. They closed out churches. They told us we couldn't assemble to pray. They told us we couldn't assemble in the church. And we obeyed. We stopped assembling. I don't know what you're doing in your house. I don't know if you're still praying when you're not here. I don't know if you're still reading your Bible or you watch the news 90% of the time and all the rhetoric of the news. I want to tell you what good news. I want to tell you news that's in the word of God. The Bible says that God says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It says old things pass away and behold, all things become new. I'm a new creature. I live by the principles of God. I put it into practice. I'm not going to be hateful. I'm not going to be greedy. I, I'm, I'm not going to be self-centered. I'm not going to be bigoted. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black. I don't care what color you are. If you're a lover of Jesus Christ and born again, let's do a work together. Let's pray together. Let's get with the ministers, elders. Let's get with people. Let's start praying. Let the world see us praying. Oh, ain't no prayer going to work. Y'all sitting down there praying and they still killing us. Oh, y'all down there praying. That's what they're saying. They're saying we don't want no more prayer. They say we don't need no more Martin Luther Kings. What we need is more Malcolm X. Grab a gun. Start killing people. That's what they're saying. You can't do no good from prison. And you certainly can't do no good from a grave site, from a grave. The best I can do it's to be a witness, speak the gospel truth. If you throw rocks at me, keep preaching. Throw water on me, keep preaching. If you curse me, keep preaching. If you ridicule me, keep preaching. Because in the end, in the end, we will all stand, whether we were ashamed of Christ or we were bold for Christ. And I believe those that are bold for Christ is those that have put on the whole arm of God and have dedicated themselves to the gospel of Jesus Christ without being afraid. So what matters? The word of God matters. What matters? Where you going to spend eternity. What matters? You have power over sin. You have power over temptation. You have power to live according to the precepts of God. You have the power. He has given it to us. Stop being weaklings. Stop acting like there's no hope. We may look down. We may look defeated, but we're not. As long as God is on the throne and Jesus Christ is making intercession, he gives unto the believer that believes him power and boldness. If I hold a sign up, they send out, they send out, I'm going to end with this, they send out a description of I'm a black man, I don't tear down, I build up. Let me tell you something. I know who I am. First of all, I am a man of God. That's who I am. Second of all, I live by the principles of that very word. That's why I call myself a man of God. Second of all, third of all, I'm happy to be a black man that's proud to serve God, that's proud to have been married for 43 years to the same woman, 
that's proud to have brought up my children in the admonition of the Lord and taught them the precepts and have been an example as a father, as a man, as a daddy, an example in my own home. No matter how they live, I taught the truth. I, I was example of the truth and my wife also. I would not let down my standard of holiness to please any human being or government or political ideology. I stand only on the truth of God's word that Jesus Christ is coming back and you and I will stand before him one day. In Hebrews, I think it's 4, 6 and 27 or 4 and 27, it says it's appointed unto man once to die and after that, judgment. So no matter how you die, you're going to stand before God. No matter how many marches you've been in. Without Christ, without Jesus Christ being in you by the Holy Spirit, you literally are a child of Satan and he controls you and he's out to kill you. But God is out to give you life and give it to, to you more abundantly. May not have been a good message for some, but holiness, without holiness, no man can see God. And holiness is only through Jesus Christ, not your church going, not your dress, not how you wear your hair, not whether you got a suit on or you don't have a suit on. Holiness is obeying God's word and announcing that he is Lord of all. So if you're not saved today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you died today, how would you be judged? How would you stand before God? Would you be judged a sinner? who rejected Jesus Christ, rejected the word of God, and live according to your own pleasure, that hell will become your home. God is not unjust to give every opportunity to every human being that ever was born, the opportunity to come to know Jesus. In the midst of all the rhetoric that is a white man's Bible, the Bible's outdated, the Bible don't matter no more, all that rhetoric don't mean nothing because the word of God is true. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth and the life. He said, though a man dies, yet shall he live. But you can only live being born again. So if you're not saved and you're living the life of sin, every day you're sinning, whether it's adultery, fornication, pot smoking, drinking, lying, bigotry, racism, hatred, whatever it is, bow your heads. Say, Father, forgive me for I'm a sinner. I have rejected you time and time again. But I realize, God, if I died today, I wouldn't be in heaven with you. And so I ask you to forgive me of my sins, God. Forgive me of my fornication. Forgive me of my lying. Forgive me of my racism. Forgive me of my bigotry. Forgive me of my self-centeredness. For forgive me, God. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Open my eyes so I can see and my ears so I can hear. God, change me. Change me, God, that may be pleasing in your sight and be obedient to your word. Please, God, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Help me to live the life that you allow me to be born. And the purpose that I'm living is to be a witness and a light in a dark world. If you say that prayer, God bless you. Thank you for joining the kingdom of God. If you have made that prayer confession, please leave a comment down below. I received Jesus today. Just let us know. I received Jesus today. I repented of my sins. If you're a backslider, you can pray the same prayer. And God will do the same thing in your life and bring restoration. He's not a God of destruction. He's a God of life right now to bring you to himself. Would you join the family of God? Would you come in and allow him to be Lord in your life? And also, I want to thank you. Watch us on Wednesday night as we're teaching on tithing. Um, continue to pray. Continue to to, to honor God in your life because this life is short and Jesus is coming back. I don't know if it's in my, in, in my lifetime, but I know he's coming back and I'm living like it every day. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Don't forget to, to support our church, please. If it's in your heart, the Holy Spirit move in your heart, give whatever you can to support this ministry and to support the work that we're doing here in the Suitland community. We're located at 3235 Swan Road, Suitland, Maryland. We'd love to have you in a place where we open, where you will get life-changing word. Have a blessed day. God bless you. Thank you for joining us.